It's a rivalry, so you would expect there would be a little bit of animosity and hostility. Pelosi on the slant. Touchdown! They are slight crisis mode. What's got to be fixed? Uh, I'm going to address all of them. We started the night off with pyrotechnics, all the fireworks, but Colorado State maintained its poise. Downfield, got him in! Touchdown! That'll do it for regulation. Got it! Touchdown, Harrison! The Buffaloes need one last stop. Get a crowd! No good! Buffaloes win it! Quick take, wild game Saturday night. A ton of buildup, and Colorado State gave Colorado a scare, but the Buffaloes survived. Shannon, are you encouraged or discouraged by the win that it was close to this competition? No, I'm, I'm encouraged they found a way to win. Down by 11 points in the fourth quarter. They, they, look, this is a rival game. Jay Norvell had his team ready to play. He said what he said for a reason. That was to get his guys because he knew it was going to get back to Coach Prime and his team, and they would be ready to go. I thought he, I thought both coach, coaches should have got a grasp on this thing a lot sooner because it started to spiral out of control. You had 17 penalties for Colorado State, 182 yards, and it ended up costing the game. And this is what I tell people all the time. Either you coach it or you condone it. Either you coach that type of play or you condone that type of play. And it's telling me that he condoned that late hit on Travis Hunt. That's right. He put it, it was a late hit. It, he, he, definitely, he, should, he should have been out. And then Kamara got ejected because he late hit uh, 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 Shador, wrapped him up, didn't give him a, an opportunity to protect himself when he took him to the ground. But for what Shador was able to do, to go to Coach Prime before I go back to Shador, he did something I had never seen in overtime. He... Most coaches defer because, Stephen A., I need to know what I need. Do I need three points? Do I need a touchdown? Do I need to go for two? He said, nah, I want the ball in Shadour's hand. I want the pressure on them. I want them to know what they need to do. I've got a hot quarterback. I'm going to put the ball in his hand. Shadour Sanders can flat out spin it. 98 yards. He's got to go 98 yards. And he got to get the two-point conversion just to get this thing to overtime. Let me tell you something, man. All of that stuff you said is true. Nothing to dispute there. Ladies and gentlemen, about Molly, we interviewed him. We talked mm -hmm. to him. We watch him play. We see the speed. We see the athleticism. Yep. We see the arm strength. I'm watching him look off coverage. Yes. I mean, he's doing stuff you don't see too many mm -hmm. college quarterbacks do. Mm -hmm. When he's... You hear about guys like... Like, he talks about how Tom Brady's going to text him after the game. Right. Talk to him after the game. You hear about people being mentored. Yeah. But it's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to visualize it. Go back and watch tape of Tom Brady. And then turn. Of course, I'm not comparing yeah. the two. But watch your door. Look off defenders. Look in one direction. All of a sudden, at the drop of a hat, throw it in yeah. another direction. He, the poise, the intellect, the athleticism, the arm strength, the moxie, the wanting the moment. Yes, yes. He, he listen. And we, the perfectionist. Did you see the post-game interview when he oh, was no, with Stan Brett? And question. basically what he said is, I went Brady mode, you left too much time. That's right. And, and that's and exactly what this he did. Kid, this kid right here, when we see talent, is mm -hmm. one thing. But to know that that's his dad, mm -hmm. and to have that light on him, mm -hmm. and to play the way that he plays up here, not just with yeah. his ability... We got a potential superstar on our right. hands. This brother is special. Right. He's very special. It's not easy to be the, the child That's right. of a star. No question. Because, that's, because the parent shadow looms large. But he's not in awe of it. He embraces it. No. He's like, why should, I, why, should I be, why should I be ashamed that my dad is Deion Sanders? That's right. He, the resources, he's protective of him. Yes. He's at midfield. When you see a quarterback standing at midfield with his coach, but he was there. I'm not. I'm talking about before he showed the yeah, white. Yeah, he like, was standing right next yeah. to his dad. I, I heard what you said. Yeah. Yeah. I heard what you said about my pops. I heard pop. what you said about my pops. That's right. And and you know, listen, Colorado State, they were ready to. Play. They, they were ready yeah. to give them a lot of props. Yeah. They showed up. They, yep. I thought they were gonna get blown out. They showed up, right. and they showed me a lot. They coached over. He deserved a lot of respect, but. He's standing right next to his dad, protecting his dad. What did he tell us when we interviewed him? He said it's personal. Yeah. It is. I thought the thing was, it can be personal, but don't make it personal. That's right. And he be did it until it was over. You go back and look at the, the touchdown that he threw to get the, the, to get it to two points to get the, and then get the two-point conversion. Yeah. Right. Watch how he's looking this way, and all of a sudden he comes all the way back. Bam. Yeah. All right. We'll keep it moving. The yeah. Travis Hunter 
injury, though, terrible. Yeah, that, that, Oregon that and SC coming up. Uh, we'll see how that goes. To the NFL we go, guys. The Chargers fell short against the Titans in overtime with a final score of 27-24, to putting them in an 0-2 hole. Head coach Brandon Staley frustrated after the game when asked if there are lingering effects on the team after last year's playoff collapse to the Jags. Take a listen. Our team has played its heart out in two games, and we've lost two tough games. But there's, it has nothing to do with the Jacksonville game. And if you ask anyone in our locker room, it has nothing to do with the Jacksonville game. And that's just the truth. It's a convenient storyline for you and for everybody else, but it's not the truth. We've lost two tough games, but the guys in that locker room, the men in that locker room, they are finishers and they have what it takes, and we're excited to prove ourselves. Thank Brandon Staley for sending with Cameron. Let me, let me tell y'all something in America right now. Let me tell you, I, I need a close-up right here. The men in that locker room for the Los Angeles Chargers – have what it takes. The question mark, Coach Staley, is you. Mr. Defensive Coordinator for one year, and somehow you get a head coaching job even though your defense was ranked 16th when you were with the Rams. Okay? That guy. You have been in Los Angeles. Your record is 19 and 17 and three. What is it? Something like that. Was 19 and 17 as a, as a as a head coach. I'm sorry. Over these first two seasons plus these two games. Okay, that's who you are. Justin Herbert is your quarterback. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen are your receivers. Austin Eckler is your running back. Okay, y'all are loaded. Y'all are supposed to be better. Now, it might not have anything to do with what happened last year, but you were up 27 to nothing and blew it to a, a quarterback in his first playoff appearance who threw four interceptions in the first half. This team, now this is what I'm big on. Molly, you know this. Shannon, I'm going to tell you this. I'm very big on signature. And what I mean by that is this. What got you the job? You see, I brought up Salah because the Jets defense didn't look good last night. He's a defensive coordinator in San Francisco right. before he got the job. Right. Well, what was Brandon Staley? You a defensive Easy. coordinator. Well, let me throw a couple of numbers out you because I got some for you, all right? The Chargers, first team in the Super Bowl era to start a season 0-2 despite scoring 50 or more points and committing zero turnovers. Mm -hmm. So Kellen Moore is doing his job. Right. 50 or more points, zero turnovers. Brandon Staley, former defense coordinator with the Rams in 2020, when they led the NFL in scoring defense and total defense. Fair enough. Since taking over as Chargers head coach in 2020, Staley's defense has been sixth worst scoring defense and fifth worst scoring uh, total right. defense in the league. We got to we got to hit the top of the hour Go here, ahead. Shannon. I, I want to give you a quick comment. I don't, I don't I don't I don't think there's any carryover. But the thing is, what I say this about Justin Herbert, he's great, except when he needs to be great. These okay. close games, they lose far too many of them for a guy of that, that stature. Yeah, including playoffs, the Chargers have lost 13 one-score games under Brandon Staley. Only the Broncos have more. Coming up on First Take, speaking of this, uh, Micah Parsons, he was all over Zach Wilson and the Jets yesterday. Does this loss prove New York should move on from their starting quarterback? We got major disagreement on this one. RC stopping by. <laughs> 